Sheringham coming deep. Manaman coming in field. Creating a little bit of space for Stuart Pearce. Away from Bravo. Cross taken by Ian Hesford, the uh, former England under 21 international goalkeeper. He's not under 21 these days. 36 years of age. Started out with Blackpool, made his name there. He had a spell with Sheffield Wednesday and Hull and Maidstone. And really, Stuart Pearce, I think, and uh, Philip Neville have just got to motor forward as fullbacks now and, and really support uh, the other forward players. Because at the moment, I, I still think the back four of England are, are sitting back too much. They've really got to get in amongst this sort of very uh, thrown together side, isn't it? And, and one that was expecting to, to take a bit of a tanning, but they started well. Matt Might go in all alone. Watson got back to the challenge. Everton skipper denying Liverpool forward in a rather strange setting. Tony Adams has scored on the near post. Steve Howey on the edge of the golden penalty area. There is Harry and there is Hesford. Well, and has found Bravo. Now by Kusa. Tony Adams who got back there. But uh, the young Bosnia did manage to wrong foot a couple of defenders on the edge of the penalty area. Ranger caught in possession by Sheringham. McManaman. Van der Sander, the Dutchman. Well, he certainly caught McManaman. The referee couldn't have been better placed. It was a clumsy challenge, but it was missed time. Van der Sander has given it away now to Ince. Sheringham tried to pick his spot, and his spot was somewhere in the midriff of Ian Hesford. Not easy to go around the side of Ian Hesford. I wonder whether he might have chipped him there. Uh, he certainly sort of seemed to sum it all up, but in the end it was a fairly tame side foot. But you can see the, the sort of little bit of uh, inexperience that they've got at the back and the understanding. Certainly, I thought uh, Marlon van der Sander was casual to say the least on two occasions then. He gave the ball to England. to Phil Neville who's got a little bit more space on that right hand side and then Steve Stone ahead of him here's Neville headed by Van der Sander flat to Pierce and now McManaman and he's got the beating of Granger that's for sure cross is a good one and Dave Watson just managed to get on the end of it Phil Neville's won the ball back. David Platt. Teddy Sheringham. Blocked by Bravo. A much better cross by Steve McManamy. He came across the ball with his left foot. Sometimes he just seemed to be reluctant, a bit lacking in confidence, but he went past his man there and drifted a, an ideal ball to the far post. Most dangerous so far. getting in a challenge on Sheringham. Neville, there's plenty of movement ahead of him. Well, the pass is a really poor one, Otis Roberts. Carlton Fairweather. Seized upon by McManaman. Ferdinand wants it early. Amanda Sanders saw it early. And Manaman's got it back. England have to settle for a corner. Very sloppy play all round, and uh, perhaps England should have capitalised again on a bit of casualness by Van der Sarbo, who has got a bit of a, a hernia and uh, suggested it may only play one half, but he does look as if he's coasting a bit. Tall Dutch central defender. Mike Manaman. 
Here comes Howick. That was fair with his header. Ince, good ball too. McManaman. Steve Stone. Rather ironic cheers as a posse of England substitutes begin to warm up. Really is a most spectacular setting. Two excursions down the left, the first Stephen Manham comfortably beat Mark Granger, didn't put it over with his left foot, it came back out because Stuart Pearce did put it in as it should be put in and, and really it was a bit of a struggle then to get it away from Steve Stone's shot. Watson. And a lead. Oh. Through the legs of Steve Stone. Might have given him a shout in Hong Kong there for nuts. Fairweather. Roberts, now Bullen, away by Pierce, anxiously. Lee for Wing. Fairweather couldn't reach it, Baikusa couldn't reach it. Adams did, just as well for England that he did. Sheringham, now maybe a chance for England to counter attack. Flat. Went down, but no foul. I think David Platt picked up in Italy there. I don't think that was a foul. Uh, tried to make a bit of a meal of it. But I mean, you can sense the crowd getting right behind the Hong Kong Golden Select side now because, because when they first came out, England were the favourites and everyone was cheering them. But suddenly they see the home team embarrassing them a little bit and they're, they're egging them on to try and get an unexpected goal. Mike Manaman. Ferdinand fouled by Duxbury, who felt he'd hooked his foot around the Newcastle man and won it cleanly. There's Ferdinand's first touch, it has been exposed today, but I think everyone knows it, it's not the greatest and he does need support, and at the moment he's not getting that support and that's why he's struggling so much. Sheringham and here's Ferdinand and England have scored it's been 33 minutes in coming they've been 33 long minutes and England have taken the lead through Les Ferdinand well it's a wonderful bit of skill wasn't it by Stephen Manaman on the left hand side jinked his way along to the byline squared it with his right foot uh, Teddy Sheringham I'm not sure he was actually uh, passing to Les Ferdinand. It looks more a shot on goal, but it ended up going to Les Ferdinand. Faintest of touches with his head. And at long last, we have got that important goal. The button threatening at the other end. Just to give you some idea about the nature of this team, Lee Bullen there, who actually plays for the golden side is the only player in this team who was voted into the Hong Kong all-star team this week a sort of PFA selector level if you like 
Holland is the only man on the field who is considered one of Hong Kong's best players. A little shake of the head there from Sheringham, just detectable, and it sums up the England mood. They're not quite sure. Oh, it's not going much, much better. There's no doubt, the Golden Select side, uh, this is far beyond their expectations, speaking to them yesterday. They, they thought they were going to be under the cosh and were looking for a bit of respectability, but we only one down five minutes before half-time. Quite staggering. Player down is Lee Bullen. that he jumped against and Bullen actually got to the ball first and how he headed the back of Bullen's head Watson with the free kick how he's header Ferdinand he's lost out to Roberts Ince will make it difficult for him but even he can't get it back Roberts given away in the end to Platt towards Sheringham I don't, I don't think there's a player in the England side with better vision than Teddy Sheringham but that was just to help on which bounced a good 7 or 8 yards beyond Les Ferdinand nobody is playing to their capabilities headed by Howie straight to Baikusa Somebody who is going to earn his money in the next 15 minutes or so is the England coach. It's a, a test of his ability to sort a few things out and try and motivate his team to produce something better. Yeah, I think if I was one of the substitutes, I'd keep out of the dressing room at half-time unless you actually got a shout that you're going on in the second half because it would be the best of places to be in. surface as much as anything defeated them. Neville to Ince. Good ball from McManaman. Running into traffic but keeping possession. Ince arriving. Ferdinand couldn't dig it out. Watts was there. Sheringham. Messi, Dave Watson managed to get himself in the middle of the mess and put people under pressure. It almost produced something in the end for Teddy Sheringham. Those Ferdinand should have done better with his first touch, set himself up for a shooting chance. steady rain coming down and uh, I would have said that was going to be ideal for the England side when they trotted out come all the way to Hong Kong got a nice zippy top it hasn't worked out that way and it has been a very poor opening 45 minutes it's far from what was anticipated and as I say Terry Venables I'm sure will have a lot to say because it isn't good enough really despite your caution about uh, not wanting to pick up injuries that there should be more urgency going into Euro 96 to Neville Stone charged down by Lee Neville's cross it's a good one towards Ferdinand but he was comprehensively beaten in the air by Van der Sander Pierce Sheringham couldn't quite direct it good cross good position that Sheringham took up not the end product as you say was from a deep position but a, a better cross but 
again, the, the main concern for me in the opening 45 minutes is without Paul Gascoigne, the, the lack of ideas or an invention from an attacking point of view. Stoppage time at the end of the first half. And the sharp snappy passing, certainly in this instance, is coming from Golden. Fairweather couldn't deliver a killer pass. England haven't delivered very much apart from a Les Ferdinand goal after 33 minutes. It's been disappointing and verging on the embarrassing. We arrived here expecting a big win, thumbing through the record books. It's almost been a chapter in the Doomsday Book. 1-0 the break. Chris Patton, the uh, Governor of Hong Kong, one of today's chief guests. Number 18 there, Alan Shearer is the first England substitute to make an appearance. He won't be the last. Les Ferdinand is the man who has been replaced. The top England footballers have celebrity status in this very English corner of the Far East. Teenage girls outside the team hotel were screaming their heads off every time Jamie Redknapp came into view yesterday. Hero worship has brought a lot of Hong Kong residents along today, but some days your heroes aren't all you hoped they'd be. Steve Howie into Alan Shearer, linking up with Teddy Sheringham. And now Paul Ince, and Mike Duxbury making the challenge, and Dave Watson, who's been one of the best England players on the field today. Finding Gravo. Maybe the Everton man is the uh, solution to England's centre-back problems. Lee. Likes up. Alan Shearer's arrival, I suppose it's not a great surprise, I'm sure Terry Benhamers would like him to score, even though it's not a full international, just to get that feeling of hitting the back of the net, and more than anything, it's his ability just to hold the ball up and, and bring the others around him into play, and, and that didn't happen in the opening 45 minutes. seven substitutes and it's interesting that neither Peter Beardsley or Nick Barby are amongst them. Are the players who might be able to feed off a Shearer or a Sheringham and really run at the Golden Team. Paul Gascoigne is not there because he has blistered feet. Blistered head too, isn't he? <laughs> Badly blistered head. I would say Darren Anderson's got a good chance as well uh, than a uh, half an hour. Perhaps it would be interesting as I said in the first half whether he gets on on the left hand side and this releases Steve McManaman to have a little gallop through the middle because at the moment it's that central area which more than anything is lacking in ideas. It's an England free kick. Tony Adams just realised that and now belatedly trotting forward. Pierce takes. There's Adams. Didn't quite get high enough above Fairweather to direct or control the header. Only a few minutes into this second half, but it, it desperately needs something just to lift the crowd. I mean, went into the 30,000s here, come along to, to see bit of entertainment uh, and an England national side and at the moment it's all uh, sort of fairly predictable stuff just would like almost the lads to treat it as a, a club game or a testimony then go out and do some party treats Sheringham to Platt skipped away from Van der Sander and from Baikusa cut out by Granger Lifted a, a few voices. A neat turns from the England captain. That's what he's got to do more of, David. But that's where he's at his most dangerous, getting into the opposition penalty area. It's happening too little at the moment.
just couldn't quite win the ball here. Control to do a party trick. By Kusa turning flat. That's pretty much how I hit a golf ball. You just try and for Kusa to hit the impossible pass rather than play it simple and, and let them sort of build up gradually if he's trying to hit the, the killer ball behind the England defence it's not going to happen that way here is by Kusa now Roberts now Fairweather and towards Pullman claimed by Seaman inside Granger for McManaman nicely weighted Ince McManaman did allow Golden to regroup there he had a couple of opportunities to play players in even after he turned onto his right foot and now Golden have got it back with Mike Pusa. here goes Bullen against Adams and Bullen is getting there he's got there saved by Seaman Otis Roberts maybe blocked by Adams who was rather embarrassed for pace Adams is talking to the referee thought he was fouled but Bullen was catching him all the time and in the end pulled up with the ball too oh, he's very unlucky here Tony Adams seemed to be coasting and, and then lost his balance on the slippery surface and it was a right to right leg that saved the day Seymour will be hoping that's as close as any Scott comes to scoring against him this summer. McManaman to Stone. Phil Neville. McManaman. Stone. Ian Hesford just fell on it. He must be absolutely delighted Ian Hesford there because the quality of the crossing has been so poor. Steve Stone, you had to fence him to, to put in a far more dangerous ball. It was a a low underpaced one which was comfortable for the goalkeeper. Fairweather. Had eight years with Wimbledon, Carlton Fairweather. Bringing the crazy gang influence to bear on what at the moment is a crazy scoreline. Phil Neville losing out to Alan Baikusa and it's a corner. England are on edge and I suppose if anybody can be forgiven for allowing the nerves to surface it's a 19 year old who only made his international debut on Thursday Lee will take the corner oh there's a header from Van der Sander and it just squirted from the forehead of the Dutchman over David Seaman's crossbar He's a mountain of a man. Uh, I saw him training yesterday and soared above. Couldn't keep it down. He said he was only going to have one half. I think he quite enjoyed himself, so he decided to have a second. Today's news so far from the field has been disappointing. So is the news from home. Terry Venables has confirmed once and for all after speaking to Mark Wright that he will not be fit to take part in the championships. And you wonder now, as Steve Howie leaves the field after an hour, whether he really will. Sol Campbell of Tottenham is his replacement had uh, 25 minutes in midfield against Hungary last weekend He's gone back alongside Tony Adams as England prepare to try to make something of this free kick Shearer and Pierce are the candidates it's Shearer Beaten up in the air and collected by Ian Hesford, but not before it had crossed the line for a corner kick. Yeah, a good strike by Shearer over the wall. Ian Hesford anticipated it well. There it is, goes over. More in the middle of the goal, so he didn't have to go that far. McManaman. Campbell. <laughs> Roberts, very calm and assured. 
I think the arrival of Sol Campbell unfortunately does uh, spell its problems for Steve Howe. He didn't look much fit, he's been out a long while, and I do think uh, perhaps his opportunity for United Six is gone. Matt Manaman. Shearer. Well, he's got a corner. His first touch was a touch heavy, just pushing a little further ahead of him than he would have wished. Stretching for it in the end. But Manaman will take the corner. Try to hang it up for Adams at the near post. It's come out via Watson as far as Ince. And now Stone. Oh, and Shearer left it for Adams. Who I think, was maybe having given Shearer a call, didn't expect him to take any notice of it. I think Alan Shearer jumped to Tony Adams. Thought, in fact, uh, he was going to get it. And then Shearer, having heard the initials out, shout ducked, and it was after you, wasn't it? And neither of them ended up with it. The end of Steve Stone's afternoon in Hong Kong is the beginning of Darren Anderson's. Again, a straight swap for uh, Anderson coming on down that right-hand side. No doubt China improved the quality of the crossing in the final ball. Sheringham got under it. to Ince and McManaman and Sheringham saved by Hesford it was a good save it was a good save but it came a long way out you can see as it squared to Teddy Sheringham it's beyond the six yard box a little dainty chip with Teddy Sheringham so good at I think could have embarrassed him 20 minutes remaining England probably have eight or nine of their starting lineup for the European Championships on the field now. Anderton through to Campbell, who is probably one of the other two or three. And the wide smile doesn't really match up with the shot on goal. Robbie Fowler is about to take the field in preference to Teddy Sheringham. It doesn't look as if he's expecting to come off. That is. Just <laughs> for finding time to uh, share a comment with the crowd. Here is Fowler. Pierce, McManaman, Neville motoring forward, almost reluctantly, it's a good cross though, Shearer, a couple of chances created in the last couple of minutes, a good cross from Philip Neville, Alan Shearer getting above his marker, just comfortably straight at the goalkeeper. You would expect now, though, in these last sort of 18 minutes, for the fitness to begin to tell. Do expect England to, to add a goal or two, because if you look at the other end now, the Golden Select 11 are struggling to, to muster many attacks and get many men forward. It's almost a case of attack against defence. Phil Neville. run and header it wasn't far away and Hesford wouldn't have got near it just been on target 
good run on the outside, but Neville Shearer put it in the cross and just eluded the far post. He has been England's most reliable goal scorer under Terry Venable, seven in 13 matches for the uh, England coach. His overall record, little under one every other game. Ball put out of play so that England can make the substitution and so that Van der Stander can receive some treatment. It's an interesting change this. It's come with just 12 minutes to play. It's England's second look at Jason Wilcox and it's in preference to Steve McManam and the right footer who's been playing on the left side. sums up the day doesn't it I mean jeers from the crowd Jason Wilcox not easy for him just coming on but he's our natural left footer and having set up the, the opening for the cross to hit it that far what 10-15 yards beyond everyone just sum up the, the lack of quality has, has been so damning on the day by Watson and Shearer just wide of the mark it isn't strictly speaking a full international match so a statistic which hangs above Alan Shearer would not have been wiped out even if he had have connected with the inside of the post in fact is uh, he's gone 20 months now without a goal for England and any kind of goal would have help top up his confidence in front of goal certainly I don't think it's suffering too much anywhere else in his play which is pretty tidy Ends. Wilcox, Ince, Platt, Neville, Anderton, Platt's there, got up in front of Watson, No silver lining to the grey cloud that England have worn today, Trevor, but what are the lessons that have been learned in terms of what we haven't got? Well, I mean, it, it's almost a game you've got to erase from the memory. It's, it's been so poor um, that there's very few pluses that you could possibly delve into and say, well, well that was good, and, and we could look at that and, and take a positive viewpoint. I mean, it, it's just been an all-round poor performance. I can't think of anyone, really, who's come out with any credit to it was the last general warm-up that I'm sure Terry Venables and his side would have wanted. You can argue about the pitch and the conditions uh, and perhaps the humidity, but none of it compares and stands up when you see how poorly they've played. Yeah, to give the ball away and being embarrassed at times, as they have done, has, has certainly not done that confidence back to any good for the journey back to England. And of course, uh, less than two weeks away now for that opening game against Switzerland. 
certainly my own personal confidence in England's chances has been built up generally during this trip. And uh, some encouraging signs, but none of them have been in evidence today. I thought the China game, they looked very sharp and up for it, and, and again, we compared the opposition was not at its strongest, but I thought there were some very positive points to come out of that game. But as, as much as that gave you a bit of encouragement, this has almost knocked you back to square one and uh, it has been a, a very frustrating 90 minutes and the malaise continues to the final moments we are now in stoppage time Adams and Inch showing the kind of determination and conviction we'd expect from them and that alone isn't going to be enough it's one of those games you usually get on a sort of club end of season tour and lads are looking drained, they didn't really want to be involved in a match like this and they're sort of going through the motions and they're glad when that final whistle is out of the way and they can go home and rest for the summer but that's not quite the case for the team involved today. Terry Venables will put five players into their misery and the other 22 out of their misery on Tuesday. That is when they squad will be announced Stuart Pearce Alan Shearer certainly nobody will have forced their way into his plans today one of the two may just have moved out of his immediate plans but I suspect he had his mind pretty much made up and will want to try and get this afternoon as quickly as he can Wilcox he's won a corner this has been given very long to um, stake his claim today Jason Wilcox Anderson will take the corner Hesford comes and Hesford gets afternoon which a lot of people Hesford included anticipated to be on a target practice it has been a pretty happy, happy afternoon for him Simon Wong the golden coach and a miserable afternoon for England a low-key atmosphere a slippery wet pitch and the best excuses that I can come up with for a pedestrian performance but they are not excuses that will wash with anybody and nor should they an England team, an England team that was close to championship strength for a period in the second half, lacked craft or quality or zest in their play. They'll hope that it's just one of those days. They'll hope that it's just a day to forget, but I can't imagine for one moment that tomorrow's morning's papers will allow them to forget it. They won just. Terry, everybody thought there'd be a lot of goals. Are you disappointed with your team's performance? Well, I, I think it's, it was never... I, I think to say that uh, we should score a lot of goals is it's romantic, but in actual fact, it doesn't always work like that. They're a good side. They've got some good results, apparently. Uh, I, don't, I don't know much about them, and I thought uh, Duxbury and, and Watson done very well. They, you know, we must not underestimate them. We didn't play as well as we can. We know that. Um, our passing wasn't uh, as good as it can be, but... Uh, we know what, there's a couple of things we should look at. It's a big plus, I think, as well. Tony Adams coming through. Um, that is a big plus for Shearer. He's had, um, uh, took part now, and before wasn't sure how much he'd be able to do. And he looks fine. So there are lots of plus points, and uh, not too many negative ones, really. At the end of this Far Eastern Tour, what do you feel England have got out of it, from the players' point of view? I think, basically, a, a bit of camaraderie. Um, we certainly worked on our fitness levels once we've been over here. We've had two games. Most of the players on tour here have played so, uh, some uh, minutes anyway, you know. Um, and basically, 
gets us away from hotels in England when the squad will be involved in that for, for some weeks, hopefully in the summer. So I think if we can get a sort of, we've kept our fitness, plus we've also got a holiday and it's a, a breath of fresh air and it's brought a bit of camaraderie between the boys. David, the waiting's over and now the exciting time's here. How would you describe the spirit of the England party? I don't think it could be any better. You know, like Stuart says, we've, we've had a lot of time together, we've had a lot of good laughs and things. And we've come out, you know, we've won both the games, we've trained really hard, and now we're all ready for the Euros. Overall, what are you most pleased about with what you got out of this tour? I just think the way everyone's got together, everyone's really feeling good now about it all. Um, the game against China was a difficult one, and the fashion in which we won it and the performance we gave was excellent. All right, we're disappointed today, but you can't always play well. And, and as I said, you know, they were there as well, and I thought they did, they did very well. Privately, do you know in your mind your 22-man squad now? Yeah, privately, yes, it will all be sorted out shortly. And the waiting's nearly over, you actually get to play in the Championship. Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, getting home, having a little bit of break, and then all get back together again. Do you sense the excitement building yeah, from the exactly. nation? We're all looking forward to it now. All the players here are looking forward to it. The real thing soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it. Thanks for joining us. The England squad return home tomorrow. And the next time England play, it'll be for real in the European Championship. Our Euro 96 coverage begins on Friday, June the 7th, with a full preview of the tournament, 8 o'clock, BBC One. Hope you'll join us for that. From Hong Kong, good night to you.